No people get scared. They think, oh, if I say my shahada, <laughs> you're going to have like this white light coming here and then uh, there's going to be flowers and something uh, strange is going to happen. Sister, if you take your shahada, all it means is this. There was a door. You've been analyzing that door for a long time. You want to go through that door and start your journey. But what advice would you give when you're a river? Me too. Yeah, of course. Cool. And inshallah, you're going to be a river today as well. Yeah? What advice would you give to our sister? Uh, I was Christian before yeah. and uh, I read the Quran and easily at the first verses I was convinced. Before the video starts guys, check out our sponsors Nature's Blends. They specialize in premium Ethiopian black seed products. Their products are fantastic health supplements and also from the Sunnah. The website is in the description link below. You can also use the discount code SALAM10 for 10% off their products. What are you guys waiting for? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, sister. So you were saying? Um, so I'm thinking of taking my shahada soon. But I have some not doubts, but some questions, questions that I have. Yeah. Same. Same. Um, like before I came to Islam, I was the same as you. Yeah. Um, like you know, I was convinced, but there was a few little things. Yeah. Uh, inshallah, and I'm, I'm here at your service. Inshallah, sister. If there's anything that I can help with. So the, what, what are those specific? Um, I know this is incorrect, but I'll just say it. Um. The Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, his marriage to Aisha. Yes, okay. yeah? yeah, we've done videos on this, yes. but I still, it doesn't fully make sense to me. Okay, all right. Like, so, so what, yeah. what, what would you, what, what troubles you? Like, be honest. Like, I don't, I don't even feel shy. Just be honest. Say, look, Baba Ali, this is what I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. I can clarify. You. Her age. That's Her it. Age. Okay. All right. So let's tackle this. This with a specific instance. Okay. Now. Firstly, what we need to understand is that child to adolescence, yeah, that specific period, is different from now to back then, yeah? Now, everybody speaks on behalf of Aisha, yeah? yeah? Everyone speaks on her behalf. Everyone wants to be a hero, like, yeah, we're here, we're speaking on behalf of her, yeah? But the question is, these people, they only use that against the Prophet, yeah, because they don't like him, yeah? I don't believe it's because they genuinely care, oh, Aisha was six. They don't like him and they want to use anything against him. Yeah. Yeah? So what we learn from that is that when people come and attack the Prophet because of that, mm -hmm. we say, hold on a second, you're attacking him because you think he's doing something wrong yeah. and because you don't like him, yeah? Like the far right and mm -hmm. people like that, yeah? Now, at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he had um, his uncle, Abu Jahan mm -hmm. and Abu Lahab, yeah? They hated the Prophet. Yeah. But for some reason, within that time, none of them used this against them. So none of them came and said, hold on a second. You know, they called him like a, a magician, a soothsayer, a, a poet, um, all kind of stuff. But none of them ever, ever attacked him and say, why are you marrying Aisha at six? Mm. So number one, the thing that we need to understand is that his enemies, his worst enemies, yeah. never used it against him. Why? That's point number one, yeah? Now, point number two. We have to look if let's tell me someone that is dear to you. My mom. Your mom, yeah? Now you know your mom, yeah? Yeah. If I said to you, your mom, um, I saw your mom steal something. Yeah. Would you believe me? No. Why? Because <laughs> I know my mom. Good. So what you're doing is you're going based on testimony of I know my mom. Yeah. My mom wouldn't do that. Yeah. So what are you basing it on is the prophet I mean your mom's life yeah how long you've known her and your your uh your emotionally attached to her besides that that could be subjective yeah mm -hmm. that could be <coughs> conflict of interest however because you know her you know what she's like yeah. you know she's not bad you base that and say no my mom would never do that yeah now if i came and showed you the footage of your mom taking something <laughs> and walking out the store would you then believe me? Yeah. Okay, would you not think to yourself, what excuses would you make for that scenario? If I just showed you the footage, she's walking out with something in her hand. What excuses would you give to defend your mom? You, you haven't proved that she didn't pay for it. She have not? You haven't proved that she didn't pay for it. Good. Number one. Number two, could she have forgotten? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> variety of excuses. Reasons, yeah. yeah. Why? Because in your head, your mom, you know your mom. Yeah. And your mom wouldn't do that. So now with us, we know the Prophet. 
we look at his whole life. Yeah. And we say, hold on a second. This man, yeah, when he was being persecuted, being trying to be killed, yeah, and I think Surah uh, Muhammad it talks about how they were plotting to kill the Prophet, yeah, mm -hmm. and Allah saved him, yeah. So in many instances he was being attacked. When he conquered uh, Mecca, mm -hmm. he didn't get people killed. He yeah. said today is the day of mercy. He forgave them, yeah. How he was when his son died, his wife Khatija, yeah. So what we do is we look at his whole life and say, hold on a second, this doesn't make sense. We know the Prophet. Yeah. He wouldn't do what you're claiming he would do. Yeah. Because from what we know, he's not that person. So what that means is your perception of what has become the wrong of today. Now, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he did not want to, he didn't propose to Aisha Radhiallah before. She was supposed to get married before, did you know that? No. She was, she was, yeah, Aisha, yeah. Aisha, 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 Aisha was proposed to you before. Let's see how he yeah? does it. So, point number one, he was, she was proposed to you before. So if she was proposed to you before, it shows that that was the norm of that society. Yeah. Yeah. So now, secondly, the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he proposed, he was married to Khatija for 25 years. Mm -hmm. He was 25 years old. Yeah. Khatija was 14. Yeah. Now, we look at his life and we say, okay, what do we get from this person? Yeah. If I'm a 25-year-old man, why would I marry a 40-year-old woman? I'm 25, can I not marry a young girl? Can you marry a young can girl? I, if I'm 25 years old, yeah. would I not want to marry a younger girl? Oh, yeah. I would want to. Uh, yeah. 40 years may be a bit too old for me. Yeah? Yeah. By the time I'm 40, she's going to be 55. Yeah. Oh, so, so then, Khatija, marriage to Khatija, yeah? And he stayed married to her for 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. So now the question that needs to be asked is this. If the Prophet had those kind of sexual urges and desires, why did he find the need in a society where women were objectified, yeah? And you could marry two, three, four, as much as you like. He stayed married to one woman for majority of his life. So we need to question and say, hold on a second, what does that teach us about a person? It teaches his character. Yeah? He must have, no, but it shows it must have been a genuine person who could have married multiple women, but he stuck to one woman, yeah, who was a business, she was a businesswoman, yeah, for a long amount of time. So that negates and takes the factor out of his pedophilic uh, wanting to marry a child, yeah? Now, let Aisha speak on behalf of herself. Everybody speaking on her behalf. Everyone's speaking on our behalf, yeah? Everyone's saying, oh yeah, why this happened, that happened. Hold on a second. Aisha is one of the biggest female scholars in Islam. <laughs> biggest female scholars in Islam, yeah? She has narrated over 2,000 hadith. She's like a scholar, yeah? And one of the people in Medina who would give fatwa was Aisha. There was Ali Radialan, Umar ibn Khattab, um, uh, Ibn Masood, Ibn Abdul uh, ibn Abbas, uh, and a few other people. Yeah. She's one of the people who people will come for verdicts. You know, we go to a scholar, like a yeah. teacher, oh, uh, is it, can I have this, is it uh, all right for me to have this drink that has 1% alcohol? Yeah. <laughs> people would go to Aisha to get fatwa. So let me get this right. Aisha, she narrates from the Prophet that they would watch the Abyssinian tribes dancing mm -hmm. and she would put her cheek on the Prophet's shoulder. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me, yeah? They would race together, yeah? So for yeah. example, in her younger age, when they were like when they were married, the Prophet would beat her. No, 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 she would, she would beat the Prophet, yeah? Mm -hmm. And as she uh, grew a bit more older, they had a race again, yeah? As she went okay. through a bit, eh? yeah. she uh, really got stronger. Thank you for your commentary. You're can welcome. I, can I continue? Point, Thank you. You're yes. Welcome. You should do some football commentary as well. <laughs> Anyway, so when they were racing, this time the Prophet won, yeah? Mm -hmm. And he made a joke and he said, look, you've put on weight. <laughs> yeah. And when he would drink, he would drink, so when somebody, like, when they would drink water, he would drink from the exact place that she drank. Mm -hmm. Now, you can understand this in two ways. The paedophilic issue is not a Muslim problem, it's a white man's problem. Oh. Yeah, it's because, let me tell you why. Most paedophiles, 100%, 99.9% .9 of paedophiles are white middle-aged, Men. No. So now, no. yes, no. yes, yes, yes. That's what yes. 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 It speaks out for itself. <laughs> I'm not even going to bring those stats. Go and see why white middle-aged men, most, not one of them, are going to Thailand. Yeah. 
go, are they going for uh, to have uh, a nice drink or are they going for something else? Yeah. So now this pedophilic attitude, this pedophilia that's going, the problem that's happened is this sister. We look at men here today who want little kids for wrong reasons and do disgusting stuff with them, and we equate it with the prophets. That's not right. Because 1400 years ago, in this country, a hundred years ago, yeah, in this country, I think William, um, I forgot his name, William Lane something, yeah, in his commentary of the UK common law, woman could get married at seven years old in this country, in the UK, seven hundred years ago, yeah, I'll, I'll find it for you. Hundred years ago, they could get married at seven years old in this country. So the point here is this, is, yeah, is that the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not, he was all of his, some of his wives were 70, 80 years old, yeah? He had wives and he married them for political reasons, variety of other reasons, yeah? So to equate him of doing a pedophilic action based on what's going on, the perverted actions of today, is wrong to do that. That's point number one, yeah? Now, what we say is that Aisha Radio Anna became a woman. How? Because he married her at six, that's a contract. It doesn't mean you're moving together. Yeah. You don't have to go to, uh, heard of betrothal. So what that means is, like, you don't know, have, like, when you're young, they'll say, yeah. okay, you were betrothed with your cousin. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah? So now, what they did is, they said you're married. The prophet waited three years. Why would a man with perverted, if, if, if he was like that, why would he wait three years? He'll say, no, I'm a prophet of God. I want her, I want her now. He waited three years. Why? He consummated the marriage at nine. Why did he wait three years? Because she wasn't an adult yet. Yeah? So now, today, girls, if you look at the ages that they menstruate, go to NHS, yeah? Nine, 10, 11, 12. So your body is saying that you are ready for reproduction. Your body is saying that. However, Islamically, that's not the only factor. Just because you're menstruating doesn't mean you are ready to get married. Because are you mentally ready? Are you sexually ready? So a person has to be asked. And not only that, you cannot cause harm. Yeah? So you cannot cause harm. So the Prophet waited three years for her to become an adult. So we can't take a nine-year-old today and compare a nine-year-old 1400 years ago. Yeah. yeah? We are like babies today. Yeah? We're like babies. But women and men back then, they were going to war. They were providing for their family. The women were, like, you would have royals, yeah? I think I've got a book here, I'll try to find it as well. You'll have royal families, yeah? That were married to 11 and she was uh, widowed at 12. Come yeah? on now. Really? Read this history. Well unfair, mate. Read, history. Well exactly. Read history. Read history. Read history. No, I'm not yes, disagreeing. Yes, yes. I'm not disagreeing. I can, with I can, you. I'm not disagreeing I can, with your content. I can even try to find I'm you. not disagreeing with your content. I'm disagreeing with your One conduct. Second. My conduct? Yeah. What's wrong with my conduct? Well, you've got a mic on the young lady, but you haven't let her speak. I'm she listening to him. Oh, that's very fair. I Thank you. Very Thank you. There, there you go. So, this is, uh, this is a childish <laughs> I'm sorry, this is absolutely like the, like this is absolutely childish behaviour. What are you trying to be a hero? Yeah, trying white to show chivalry is not there. White knight, yeah. White knight is my time. Yes, keep your white knight, save someone else. Yeah? She came here, she's asking a question, she's listening. <laughs> Have I stopped you? Did I say shush? <laughs> you listen to me, woman. Yeah? I'm the man. Have I done that? No. Oh, cut, cut, cut down yeah, with the drama. Go to dra drama school. This, this, is, this, is, this, this, is, this is post colonial mentality. We're here to save. We've come here to save the woman. Please go save yourself. Yeah? Okay. All right. Thank you. So, yes, William Blackstone in his commentary on the English law, published in 1867, page 110, yeah? It talks about. Girls used to be married, could be married at the age of seven in this country, hundred years ago, yeah? In France, now they've lowered the age to 15, yeah? In Turkey, it's 18. So to Turkey, they'll look at UK and say, you guys are paedophiles, yeah? You say 16. We will look at France and say, you guys are paedophiles, yeah? Mm. And then I think it's Japan is 20 or 21 years of age. They'll look at all of us and say, you all are paedophiles. <laughs> so the age changes. What Islam says, sister, is that, <laughs> 
not one shoe fits all. Because you might have a 16 year old British girl who's not ready for intimacy. But Law says he can. Yeah. And majority of the girls in this country, let's get it right, at 11, 12 are having sex behind the bushes. Excuse me. Yeah? Just sorry, forgive me, I'm just being blunt. Yeah? They're having sex. They are, they, they, they are, go and watch these documentaries on this, teenage pregnancies. Yeah? So the thing here is this the issue, enough, the issue, cool. mature what well, is illegal. <laughs> but what I'm trying I'm to show you. I'm asking what you think. Forget the law. No, no, no. What I think. No, 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 no. What I think. What I think. Islamically, a woman is not one shoe fits all. Islamically, oh, yeah. a woman has to be mentally, sexually, physically ready, and there should be no harm factor. Meaning, if having intercourse is going to cause harm, she can't. So what that means is you don't have an age on it. What it means is each individual girl has to be assessed herself. That's what Allah says in the Quran this in Surah so Nisa. Yes, yes, it's very risky for you. Yes. Allah says, can I just finish? Allah says in the Quran. No, 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 you're, you're missing the point. Yeah, point. We, can't, we, can't, we can't force the girl. Nobody said you can force her. What we're saying is, obviously the mother will have dialogue with her daughter, yeah? To see, to see if she's ready or not. They might, and this perception that as soon as she menstruates or reaches certain age, she needs to get married, is pathetic. A lot of Muslims, they will say their daughter should study. Nobody has said you need to go and get married automatically, yeah? But what I'm saying is, is that in today's time, Allah says in the Quran, test the orphans until they reach a marriageable age, yeah? And test them, test them for what? For their inheritance, their wealth. So if I adopt a girl or a boy, I have to wait and test them until they reach the, uh, a marriageable age, then I can give them what is left by from their fathers. Allah says in the Quran, test them. So the issue here is this sister, yeah? Islam has came to cater. What was the original question? Uh, why did the Prophet marry Aisha at six? Yeah. So the point here is this sister, yeah? Is that if I am a thief, yeah? I will think everybody's a thief like me. So I will never let you, I will never say to you, can you hold this for me? Because I'll think, oh, okay. she might steal it. No, 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 no. Because why? My mentality is that I'm a thief. I steal things, yeah? I will never let anyone have something. Why? Because I will think everybody must be like me. So that's why people in this age, because pedophilia is disgusting, and the elites have been in this as well, they've been exposed, yeah? And majority are white men, yeah? White men in middle, middle age, not all, I'm just saying stats, I'm not saying everyone's like that, yeah? The point is this, what they do is they look and be like, okay, hold on a second, if they are doing that, okay, and if your prophet, if your prophet married at six, ah, he must have won it for the same reasons, false analogy. You can't compare a vile, disgusting man who wants a little child for disgusting things to a man, the Prophet peace be upon him, who married her at six, that's a contract, and consummated it at nine, three years. Why did he wait three years? Why does somebody who has love for a child, he could have said, I'm a prophet, of God. I would like this, I would like this woman, <laughs> I would like this girl right now, yeah? Why did he not do that? Why did he wait three years? because for her to become an adult. What does that teach us as Muslims? That if my son wants to marry a girl, my son is 18 and the girl is 14, we will say, hold on a second, the legal age in this country is 16. She's not adult yet. The Prophet waited for Aisha for three years. We will wait three years, four years, five years. So those who say, hold on a second, your Prophet is a role model for all times. Yes, he is. And we implement what he did in today's age. So. There's a variety of factors, sister, but Aisha Radira Anha is the person that can speak for herself. She doesn't need no one to come and rescue her. So, sister, does that answer your question? Is there anything yeah. to say to me? If there's anything to say, I didn't know, I didn't get that. Be honest, I'm, I'm totally fine. No, it makes sense. You, you okay. rendered it right. Thank okay. you. Is there any... Um, um, yeah, I have another one. Sure, please. Look, I'm here for you all day. <laughs> and, I, and I believe you shouldn't delay your shahada. I'll um, tell you why as well. Okay, yeah. can you explain that then? Okay, let me tell you why you shouldn't delay your shahada. Yeah? Now, sister, look. When I, before I came to Islam, I knew Islam was the truth, yeah? yeah? And I said, to, I, had, I was suffering from my desires, worldly stuff, yeah. yeah? I knew Islam was the truth, but I would say, ah, oh, you know, if I, if I take my shahada now, I have to commit and I have to pray now, and I have to do this and I have to do that, that was stopping me. Imagine if I died in that state, yeah? So the thing is, sister, a lot of people get scared. They think, oh, if I take my shahada, <laughs> You're gonna have like this white light coming here, and then uh, there's gonna be flowers and something uh, strange is gonna happen. Sister, if you take your shahada, all it means is this there was a door, you've been analyzing that door for a long time, 
you want to go through that door and start your journey. All the shahada means is that you've got the key, yeah? You've got the key, you've opened the door, the yeah. journey starts. Begin that change now. Because at the end of you don't know if you're gonna live. And I can see from your and I can see from you that you seem con con you're convinced. Like not with me, like from what your research you've been doing, sister, you seem convinced, yeah? And alhamdulillah, it's just a journey, yeah? We all have our struggles. Look, we've got our sister here, she's from Belgium, a brother with a husband, we've got other sisters in conversity. Oh here, look, uh, come here. <laughs> what, what are you doing here? I'm at Israel, yeah, come. You wanna come in the middle? Oh yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I, I Let me go in the middle. My wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she wants to come, she can. Yeah? Okay. So you came to Islam as well? Yeah. So nine, nine years ago. Nine years ago, yeah? yeah. The sister wants to take a shahada. She had some questions. Did you ever have a because me, I came to Islam as well, yeah? Mm -hmm. Five, six years ago. I had a moment where I thought, I want to accept Islam, but my desires and stuff like that. And if I start praying. I, I felt exactly the same what, thing. What, what, what advice would you give when you're a reaper? Me too. Yeah, of course. So cool. And inshallah, you're going to be a reaper today as well, yeah? <laughs> What advice would you give to our sister? Like regarding what made you give the extra push? Me, um, my experience is that uh, oh, yeah. when, when I read the Quran, because uh, I was Christian before, yeah. and uh, I read the Quran, and easily at the first verses I was convinced. Convinced. Wow. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's, it's um, obvious. It was really obvious for me, really. But. Uh, uh, my family was Christian, yeah. my environment was all Christian, and it was really even interesting, it was a problem for them. Yeah, same, same. I got kicked out of my house. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so for me, it wasn't a good, it wasn't the, 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 a good thing for me to do it, because it was caused a lot of problems. Yeah. And, and really, uh, I, um, the first thing that, that I, um, I, 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 uh, I was sure it was the truth, but I was saying to myself, I don't want to take that path because it's going to cause, cause me pain, mm. okay? But when you pass through that door, after, you take things easily, yes. and you see it's... When, when, you, when you take that step, you, 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 you're going to see your heart is going to be... You're going to feel more, more light, lighter. Yeah, yeah. because I, I'm French, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Je m'appelle Ali. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> your heart is going to feel lighter, and you, you see... If you're sincere with God, it's gonna make your path easier. Yes. You see, things that I, I couldn't imagine I would do, now I do it. You know? Wow. And same, same, all, same, same. And in all your life, if you're really sincere, if you really try constantly to to get um, close to God, if you keep your, your intention sincere, you're gonna see every uh, obstacle is gonna be um, distracted one by one because God is gonna make your, your path easy so it's it's true yeah is there any so, question that you have that like, that I can answer like, like uh, any doubts so you probably nice. know yeah Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're a reaver, so you guys like know my situation. Yeah. My parents yeah. don't know about it because they're against Islam. Okay. They, because I'm from Kosovo, and the culture there is really like, that it's a Muslim country, but the the culture is not Islamic. Okay. You know, it's like, it's really weird to explain, like the guys look at girls and you know stuff like that. Yeah. And so my, that's why my parents see Islam in a bad way because that's what they think it is. Mm. So. So like you're a bit you're scared. Yeah. Okay. I'm. Have you suffered that? I, I uh, like your parents hated Islam. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, look. I, shall I tell you something? Me. My dad sits to me, and by the way, I keep saying this. Like my dad is not an evil man. My dad's gone through certain stuff in, in, in Turkey at the hands of bad Muslims. That's why, yeah? My dad says to me, the thing that I hate the most has been born into my family, Islam. So he's saying, the thing that I never wanted, you have come with it. Sister, look. Now, the thing is this, sister. Sometimes I think to myself the following. I believe every single revert is a blessing, to, blessing from Allah to your family. Let me tell you why. Because through you guys and us, our families will come to Islam. Yeah? Every, every, each, each of us is a messenger to Islam. Yes. So you see, Allah chooses. And when He chooses certain people, He chooses them. Why? You might think Islam is just for you. No. Islam, Allah has picked you to be the ambassador to convey that message, message to your family. So
So every single one of us, you and you and me, inshallah, you as well, right now, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with his permission, is that you're going to be that. Yeah. Feel free, sister, if there's any other questions you want. That's it. Okay. Now, I would personally say you should take your shahada. Yeah? Because, like I said to you before, you're not going to get uplifted and start flying around speaker's corner, <laughs> you know, and we're going to say, yes, Allah Akbar, yeah? <laughs> All that is, sister, is that you're starting your journey. All you're doing is you're saying, Brother Ali, I'm ready and I want to start my journey. And all this means, sister, is your gradual steps. Your gradual steps on your journey of searching. That's what it is. Because you're already doing it now. Do you believe in Allah? Do you believe in the Prophet Muhammad? Do you believe in the Quran? You're a Muslim. Do you know what it is? Let me tell you something, yeah? Ask me, do I like dark chocolate? Do you like dark chocolate? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah? So all I've done here is this. I have affirmed what I already know. So I know in my head, I like dark chocolate. And all I have to do is say, I like dark chocolate. So all you're doing is you're affirming. You're already a Muslim. All you have to do is affirm it, sister. That's it. Wallahi, that's the only thing that's missing. And then from there onwards, and wallahi, billahi, wa tillahi, if I'm lying. Yeah? And I'm only saying this. I don't want to sound like I'm some... Peer, the peers are like these holy men, yeah? Uh, I'm not saying that. Wallahi, I made a dua today. Oh Allah, let inshallah someone come to Islam, yeah? This here, what happened to me, sister, happened to me five years ago with a brother called John Fontaine. And the reason why I made this dua is because he said to me, make a dua, yeah? And I was new to Islam. And in my head, I was a bit still ignorant, yeah? I said, ah, oh, make dua, like, and he was being specific. He was saying, make dua, we're gonna go Shep uh, 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 Westfield. Make dua at 1.45, someone comes to Islam. So I'm making dua, but I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> good luck on that one. <laughs> Wallahi, Allah humiliated me. We went to Westfield. We went to Stratford. Wallahi, some, a two, two couple came to me. They had bags in their hand. When you have bags in their hand, people don't stop. They came right in front of me and I spoke to them. And I totally forgot that. And I was talking and then they said, and he was convinced he wanted to accept Islam. As soon as he accepted Islam, I thought to myself, yo, and I, no, no, I said, John, I said, John, come here, yeah? So he doesn't know what's going on. I said, come here, he came. I said, what time is it? I said, bruv, why are you calling me here for the time? I said, bruv, what time is it? Wallahi, I think there was five minutes left, yeah? And wallahi, Allah taught me a lesson. That don't ever belittle dua. Never. If you want to, look, I'm being honest. You want to get married? You want to ask for a husband? Go in. I want tall, dark, handsome, rich. Wallah, I'm telling you, with Allah, there is no limits. So that day I learned a lesson and wallahi today I said, Oh Allah, if there's anyone, let them accept this now. Yeah? And I don't do that often. Let me get this twisted. Wallahi Aki, I think I don't do it often. But today I did it and inshallah sister, that Allah accepts it from us, inshallah. But I would say look, wallahi, just take your shahada, you start your journey, we'll get some sisters in contact with you, and inshallah you just start your journey. Yeah? We'll just repeat after you. Allah is gonna make things easier for you, really. I'm excited, man. Do you, do, you, do you want to do it? Do I not need to wear like a scarf or anything? We're going to come to that. Trust me. No, I mean yes. that while I say it. Okay, repeat after me, yeah? Ashadu. Ashadu. An la. An la. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Muhammadan. 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 Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Can I say it right, guys? I'm, I'm very nervous. Wallahi, I'm very nervous. <laughs> said it, is it correct? Yeah? Is it correct? Is it correct? Yeah. Okay, sister, um, repeat after me in English, yeah? I bear witness. I bear witness. There is nothing worthy of worship. There is nothing worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And Prophet Muhammad. And Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is his messenger. Is his messenger. Is his messenger. Allah wa Akbar. Allah wa Akbar. Sister, may Allah bless you. Wallahi, forgive me, I'm, I'm just a little bit nervous. Yeah. Uh, wallahi, I, I, wallahi, sister, believe me, it's, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words. Wallahi, may Allah bless you, sister. May Allah accept it from me. May Allah make us sincere. Wallahi, may Allah bless you, sister. Wallahi, I'm, I'm really, really happy for you. But before, like, you start your journey as well, sister, I want to give you some advice. Yeah, I'm as your brother and I care for you as my sister and forgive me for saying this because I have to. You have to be careful. Yeah. I've been in the Muslim community and alhamdulillah there's beautiful brothers, don't get it twisted. There's beautiful sisters, there's beautiful brothers. But the thing is sister, 
there are people who will want to take advantage of you. Yeah? yeah. Be very careful to ideologies, people who come with perverted ideas, like, you know, like ISIS. Yeah? Be very careful, sister. Because they aim and target new Muslims. Yeah? They don't know anything. Yeah? We will get you in touch with our teachers, personal, that we can vouch for. Yeah? And I'm going to get sisters in contact with you that I trust and I can vouch for. Yeah? Because we don't want you to be taken advantage of. Number two, sister, yeah? Be careful to <laughs> marriage proposals, yeah? You're going to get them, you're going to get them, yeah? And I'm sure there's a lot of lovely brothers, but sister, be very careful. Because you need Islamically a wali. You know what a wali is? Your guardian, yeah? Now, why Islam has legislated this is to protect you. Because I'm a man. If somebody wants to ask for my daughter's hand, I'm a man, I know a man. Let's talk, yeah? Let me electrocute you a bit, yeah? <laughs> yeah, 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 let me give you some, some, some uh, votes, yeah? yeah? The point is why? Because there are men out there who use girls, yeah? Both Muslim and non-Muslims, yeah? So be careful of that. And number two, sister, be careful to groups. In Islam, sadly, there are groups, yeah? Why are these groups? These groups are not against Islam, they're for Islam. Why? Because it shows you that we filter out from the faith, from the real, yeah? Okay, so be careful to groups who deem other Muslims as, oh, don't, if, if you hear anyone say, oh, don't listen to this person, don't go to this person, and if it's not legitimate, obviously some of them are legitimate. So for example, there's certain groups that you shouldn't listen to, etc. and certain individuals, we will help you in that process, yeah? However, be very careful to those three things, sister, yeah? If anyone tries to come and, oh, yeah, this, that, come to this circle, be careful to them, be very careful, sister, look as your brother, we're here, our teachers are here, inshallah, our um, sisters as well. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to get you in a group, yeah? So if you can give me your email, yeah, and your telephone number, I'm going to transfer it to our sister team, yeah? And they're going to put you in a group, and in that group, they will help you, inshallah. So you can come and talk to them, and eventually develop yourself, inshallah. Yeah? Okay, so if you want, you can give me your email first, and then you can, however you feel comfortable, yeah? Okay, and I'm going to get that directly to our sister team, inshallah. Yeah? Okay, so let me just open it for you. And so your journey is started, sister. And right now, all your sins are forgiven, yeah? All your sins are forgiven, so you are like, alhamdulillah, inshallah, a pure person. We, 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 we are jealous in a good way, yeah? Okay, because we're sinning people. It's from Allah, you know? With these things, huh? yes, please, 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 inshallah. That is halal, yes. If, 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 any, if, if any brother says that, just let me know, yeah? Yeah, okay. So, inshallah, yeah. Sister, just put the, put it here. There you go. Put, put, put the details here, inshallah. So, brothers and sisters, um, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said it is better than red camels, like the reward of somebody coming to Islam. Red camels don't do it to them. They were like Ferraris back then, yeah? Okay. Is it all there? Okay. Just double check that's correct, yeah? So, we ask Allah to accept it from us, brothers and sisters. And we ask Allah to purify our intentions because these matters, inshallah, sometimes it can be used in the wrong ways. Yeah, you know, like, oh, uh, you know, look at me, you know, I get people to accept, I would be like, this is from Allah. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has chosen me to deliver that. And inshallah, Allah unites us in Jannah, sister. May Allah bless you. If there's any questions you want to ask, please feel free to ask, inshallah. And I'm going to get some sisters, if there might be some in, in, in the park. And inshallah, we can introduce you to them and we can take you from there. Yeah? May Allah bless you, brothers and sisters. And thank you for you played a big role in this, man. <laughs> Don't get it twisted, yeah? You're going to get it twisted, fam. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.